It's been 24 hours of political turmoil in Malaysia. The government is in limbo with Prime Minister Mahathir Mohamad resigning. The ruling Pakatan Harapan coalition has lost its majority after a walkout by at least 11 MPs. The talk now is that a new ruling coalition is being formed. And in the past few hours, Dr. Mahathir has been meeting with the king who will, who, while accepting his resignation, has insisted that he stay on as interim leader. Our correspondents, Melissa Goh and Afifa Arifin, are covering all angles of the story in Kuala Lumpur. But first, how did we even get here? Here's a look at how events have unfolded. A flurry of surprise talks over the weekend confirmed speculation that changes were about to come to Malaysia's political landscape. The talk was that a new coalition was in the works that would exclude Anwar Ibrahim and his closest allies. More than 130 ministers and leaders from PAS, AMNO, Bursatu and PKR were seen gathering at the Sheraton Hotel in Pataling Jaya, with most refusing to comment on what was happening behind closed doors. I'm a bit lost. Me too. I, uh, I, I don't know what, what's going on actually. <laughs> but AMNO's Secretary General hinted to CNA that the government had effectively collapsed. So is, is, is Pakatan Harapan over? I think so. Pakatan Harapan is over? I think so. In a late night speech delivered from his home, PKR President Anwar Ibrahim accused members of his own party and the Prime Minister's party of betrayal. He said they were trying to bring down the government and stop him from succeeding Dr. Mahathir. The two men, once bitter enemies, united ahead of the 2018 elections to drive out the UMNO dominated Barisan Nacional coalition, which had dominated politics in Malaysia for six decades. But Dr. Mahathir has since refused to commit to a specific date for keeping his promise to hand power to Anwar. Now for more on this, first let's go to Melissa Go in Kuala Lumpur. Mel, what's uh, come out of Dr. Mahathir's meeting with the king? Well, the king, the young Dipatuan Agung Sultan Abdullah Riyaduddin, has accepted uh, Dr. Mahathir's resignation. A uh, rather somber looking Dr. Mahathir was seen leaving the palace uh, after over an hour in the palace. Now he waved back to the media as we waved at him, uh, calling his name. Many Malaysians did not envisage his announcement to quit. You know, this announcement will come so abruptly and so unceremoniously. Nevertheless, a decision has been made and accepted by the king. 94-year-old told uh, Dr. Mahathir has been appointed, in fact, as, by the king as the interim prime minister to administer the country until a new prime minister has been appointed and a new cabinet form. Now, the chief secretary, Mama Zuki, has just released a statement to that end. And the police chief, Hamid Bador, has also had an audience with the king, assuring him peace, stability in the country, and it will be utmost priority. There's no disruption, unnecessary worries among the people. The democratic process, he said, will be adhered to. Um, that will allow time for the palace, uh, time to go through the due process. He also warned anyone from spreading rumors to create tensions while a new prime minister is being appointed. Mel please, Glenda. So there's been a lot of talk back and forth over whether he's moving to actually act against Anwar. Do we have any idea on, you know, what's come out of that? Certainly there's a lot of speculations, but as far as Pakatan Harapan component party leaders are concerned, they believed him, they believed Dr. Mahathir, that he had played no part in this political turmoil caused by the betrayal of some of the Pakatan MPs, trying to join hands with the opposition MPs to form a new coalition, a new government to topple Pakatan Harapan. Now, they had a one-on-one -on -one session with Dr. Mahathir at his home this morning, and Dr. Mahathir told them that he will never work with people tainted by corruption from the last regime. And no way he will work with members from the opposition Islamic Party past. Now, both uh, DAP Lim Guan Eng and Mohammed Sabu from Amana, uh, they pleaded for Dr. Mahathir to change his mind and stay on to lead the country. Now, an emergency meeting, as we speak, is now being held tonight at Bursato headquarters. We'll see what comes out of that. Yes, yeah, so what should we be looking out for next, Ben Mel? You know, over the next 
few days. There will be lots of to and fro to mention here. The palace will be busy as the king tries to ascertain who commands the majority in this 222 seat parliament. It's a number game. Whoever that has 112 MPs, a simple majority, will form the new government. So it's a lot of horse trading, they said. But I haven't seen any evidence of it because there's a lot of talks been going on that what you know this few days, in fact, leading to the beginning of parliament session in March, there will be lots of uh, speculations that will never end. And in fact, uh, we are hearing also that Dr. Martia himself will be giving a news conference, perhaps soon, to announce his decision as to. Um, Versatu, his party that has quit Pakatan Haraban, whether they will be able to form the coalition together and maintain the current structure of the um, cabinet as we know it right now. On Thursday, there's an economic stimulus package coming up to uh, bolster the country amid a slowdown in the economy and the adverse impacts from the coronavirus outbreak. All these are uppermost in people's minds. They want, you know, they want help in terms of, you know, they, it's a Bread and butter issues that more concern about this political turmoil is so unnecessary, they said. But having said that, they respected Dr. Martil's decision today. All right, my thanks for that. Mel Go speaking to us from Kuala Lumpur. Now, FIFA Arifin joins us as well from the PKR headquarters in Pataling Jaya. A FIFA, a key meeting was set for tonight, uh, but we understand it's not happening anymore. That's right. The meeting of the Presidential Council of uh, the leaders from the remaining parties in Pakatan Harapan, namely PKR's Anwar Ibrahim, DAP's Lim Guan Eng, as well as Amanas Mohammed Sabu, were supposed to have taken place uh, here outside at the PKR headquarters at 8 p.m. today, but it has been postponed to tomorrow. Now, the leaders will be meeting to discuss the uncertain future of their coalition now that they have become the uh, minority government in Parliament, especially as, you know, a series of shocking developments that took place throughout the day. This included Bersatu, a former Pakatan Harapan member, leaving the coalition as well as 11 MPs quitting PKR as well. So right now, Pakatan only has 102 out of the total 222 seats in parliament, which is less than the simple majority it needs uh, to form the government. Now, of course, in the last 24 hours, we have seen a lot of shocking developments, which really unfolded yesterday as dozens of MPs from across the political spectrum from parties like Bursatu, AMNO, Islamic Party AS, uh, PAS, MCI and MIC meeting at Sheraton uh, to you know, discuss the idea of forming a new coalition. Now, whether that new coalition uh, will actually you know, take place, that's something that remains to be seen. But one thing that's clear, at least on the Pakatan side, is that the leaders still very much pledge the support to Dr. Mahathir. Um, in fact, DAP's leader Lim Guan Eng says that his party plans to propose to the Presidential Council tomorrow uh, to convince Dr. Mahathir to stay in power as Prime Minister in order to really fulfill the promises that Pakatan Harapan had laid out during the elections back in 2018. Afifa, so what's the next move now for Mr Anwar then? Well, you know, it's been a very busy day for Mr. Anwar Ibrahim today. It started out in the morning when he met with Dr. Mahathir and, and other Pakatan Harapan leaders. Uh, that's when Dr. Mahathir told them that he will be resigning as Prime Minister. Mr. Anwar later uh, met with the King before coming to the PKR headquarters uh, to have a meeting with his internal uh, party uh, leaders. Now, the future of the coalition is uncertain, but so is the future of uh, his own party, PKR. Uh, this comes, of course, as I said, after 11 MPs have quit the party, including the deputy president Azmin Ali as well as three other cabinet ministers. Now, PKR used to have the largest number of seats in parliament, but after the departures, it only remains with 39 seats. So that is the third largest party behind AMNO and DAP. So that's really been a big blow for PKR. We understand that Mr. Anwar could be meeting some of his um, MPs from the party later this evening. Now, we also know that Mr. Anwar has always been the prime minister in waiting, and he's been very vocal about his support uh, of Dr. Mahathir and said that he will wait for Dr. Mahathir to hand over the reins and that was supposed to have taken place in November after Malaysia holds the APEC meeting. But observers, you know, are very quick to highlight that with all these recent developments, it's highly unlikely that Mr. Anwar will ever become the Prime Minister. In fact, this afternoon, outside the PKR HQ, um, CNA's Melissa Go asked Mr. Anwar himself whether he will become the eighth Prime Minister, to which he only said, we shall see. And that's a very clear indication of just how uncertain things are in Malaysia's political landscape right now.
All right, thanks for that. Uh, Afifa Arfin speaking to us from uh, PKR's headquarters, and that is in Pataling, Ajaya, Malaysia. Well, lots of twists and turns as the government remains in limbo, and we'll have more analysis on what's happening in Malaysia later on Asia tonight.